So genomics refers to the gene or the template which guides the things turned on in the individual cancer. And so we're all born with three billion base pairs of DNA encoding our body. And in that cancer are those three billion base pair, but some of them are mutated or some of them are changed. And that's the hallmark of the cancer is some DNA changes have happened to allow cancer to, to progress. And so what we can do is look at the DNA and also look at the RNA. So RNA are the genes turned on. And through a gene expression profile or a gene chip, we can look at all of the genes turned on in the genome. And we can get a picture of all of the, can of all of the pathways in that individual cancer. We can then go back and look at the gene and say, are there increased copy of an individual gene or decreased copy? Is that gene deleted? And again, it could tell us some of the driving forces for the cancer. Because if you start to hit the cancer at its root, that is where the DNA is changed, you're more likely to have a long-term benefit in that individual cancer. There's also the field of proteomics. And so proteomics is taking a drop of blood. And if one had infinite resolution, one could look down and see all the proteins in the blood. And it will reflect your metabolism. It would reflect the cancer and also the supporting cells of the cancer or the blood vessels of the cancer all together. So in my laboratory, what we do is we take a drop of blood, it goes through a superconducting magnet, and we get about 60 gigabytes of data from a drop of blood. So an entire computer hard drive from one drop of blood. If we then take 100 brain cancer patients and we give them a drug and 50 respond and 50 don't respond, we say what's similar in the pattern of proteins in responders and non-responders. So that 101st patient, we're not going to guess. We're going to know in advance whether they're likely to respond or not. And so it's going to tell us more and more information to subclassify disease. You know, in my profession, in oncology, we're in general lumpers. We lump things together. So brain cancer or glioblastoma multiforme, we lump that together. But in reality, there probably are five or six kinds of glioblastoma. And over the next several years, we're going to start to subclassify them and treat them accordingly. Not everybody should be treated the same. Part of the role of when you're a brain cancer patient is to talk to your oncologist and ask them directly, do you have studies that can look at the genomics of my cancer? Are there ways you can interrogate the DNA or interrogate the RNA, the genes turned on within the cancer, to better understand my cancer? And so it's something that you really need to push. If your center doesn't offer it, many other centers do as part of clinical trials. And you could certainly move on to another center for a second opinion regarding the pathology of your cancer. But the bottom line is you have to push. Cancer therapy has changed dramatically and technology has arrived in the treatment of cancer. We as an individual, as a patient or a physician, have to push. The patient is in charge of their own care. The patient has to take the center role in pushing forward and in doing the research to figure out what's best for them. Glioblastoma represents many different kinds of cancer. So there are two general classifications of glioblastoma. One is a mutation happened in a cancer cell and it became a glioblastoma. The other is a low-grade cancer happened and transformed or then became a glioblastoma. So they're two separate buckets. And within that, depending on where the alteration happened, that is what genes were turned on first, will tell us something about the biology and then reflect in something on the treatment of the individual cancer. And so in a sense, this sounds like science fiction that we could start to identify the pathways in the gene, but it's becoming more of a reality. And right now, ongoing, there are probably four or five clinical trials in the country that are targeting pathways with molecular markers attached to them. And that number is gonna go up to several dozen in a year, and hopefully multiple dozen years after that. So we're at that exponential growth phase. When I look at brain cancer today, I see hope. I see a pipeline of drugs that work. The challenge over the next year or two is to identify what drug works in what patient.